One of the things that's fascinated me for many years is the long history of musical notation. Um, why it is that composers chose to try to write down the music that they've got in their head, how it's changed over the centuries, and perhaps most interestingly of all, why the notation is simultaneously so sophisticated, and it is immensely sophisticated uh, intellectually and technically, um, but yet at the same time rather inadequate, a rather inadequate vehicle for expressing that music. And that tension between its potential and its sophistication and its inadequacy ultimately for performers is something that really fascinates me. The period of music history that I've spent a lot of time working on is the late 15th century, the sort of late medieval, early Renaissance period, which is actually one of those kind of cultural turning points in uh, early modern Europe. And from a musical point of view, it's the period when quite a lot of our um, assumptions about what it means to be a professional musician started coming to the fore. And the musician that uh, I've spent a lot of my professional life working on is a musician and lawyer called Johannes Tinctoris, who was uh, born in what we would call southern Belgium today. But he spent a lot of his time working at the Aragonese court, the royal court in Naples in the late 15th century. He had an enormously high reputation for his musical abilities and his musical knowledge. He had a very wide knowledge of um, musicians, composers of his time in the kind of middle third of the uh, 15th century. And while he was working in Naples, um, at least a couple of really luxurious manuscripts were compiled for the library in the, uh, at the Royal Court there. And one of these even has uh, a miniature portrait of Tinctoris. And we're very fortunate here at the Conservatoire that we've had very generous funding from the Arts and Humanities Research Council here in the UK to produce uh, a new freely accessible online digital edition of the treatises of Tinctoris, both the Latin texts and English translations. And gradually, over a period of three years, we're producing this uh, new edition, which is going to be mounted, and indeed is already mounted, on our own dedicated website. One of the particular challenges that we've had is how to deal with the musical notation of the musical examples that punctuate um, the treatises. And we've developed some very specialist software that will transfer the notation from the original manuscript into alphanumeric text, which then goes through a specially custom-built parser that we have developed, which recreates the 15th century notation but in a way that can be searched digitally so that eventually we come out with the edition at the other end. As far as beneficiaries of the project are concerned, um, because the early music scene is really a remarkably rich scene across the world, and because these texts are fundamental texts really to at least one part of the early music movement, um, we're hoping that the project will be of benefit to scholars, performers, um, record companies, publishers, editors, in this particular area of late medieval and early Renaissance music. Um, but then beyond music, in fact, because of the very uh, specialised software that we've been able to develop for the texts, we think it's quite realistic, in fact, that some of that software will be able to be reused by other editors in, for example, literary studies and historical studies uh, in other areas of late medieval and Renaissance work.